Hi everyone and welcome back to 123 Geek and today we're going to be going over the PlayStation 5 in the news that was revealed today by Sony. So stick around and find out. Let's get started. Thank you so much for stopping by 123 Geek and this is about the PlayStation 5 and the information that was revealed today and when it's going to be coming out. So stick around to the end. If you are not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. Please hit that bell icon so that you could be notified when I get out new videos that come out several times a week. And anyways, let's go ahead and get started. We will start with the video games that are kind of announced and uh, not actually the game titles themselves, but the studios behind those games. Number one, we have uh, the company that brought you uh, the remake of The Shadow of the Colossus, and that's Blue Point Studios. So they also came out with something that's called Blast Factor that came out on the PlayStation 3, and it was a digital-only game. However, it's no longer up on the PlayStation Store, so I want to go looking for that. Nonetheless, they are working on a game. It's going to be a PlayStation exclusive, and, you know, that's something to look forward to, so I'll keep you updated on that. Moving forward, we're going to go ahead and talk about Japan Studios. And uh, Polyphony uh, Studios is also going to be working on a game, and they have a couple demos that should be coming out on the PlayStation 5 at launch, I'm guessing. And, uh, you know, Japan Studios is, is a great uh, studio. It's one that they've done a ton of stuff. You've seen it. Uh, I'll put a couple of their uh, titles up here. And, you know, anyways, let's continue down this rabbit hole. So they are sticking with the same naming convention that they have always stuck with and that's just slamming that number on there. So it's going to be the PS5 and that's guaranteed what the name is going to be. So, okay, I mean, <laughs> there's, no, there's no reason to give another name. There's, I mean, what's the point? It's just PlayStation doing PlayStation things. And uh, honestly, it's okay because actually the, uh, the dev kits that we saw um, they are most likely real, almost a hundred percent real that those dev kits that were leaked are most likely the dev kits that a lot of places were, uh, you know, kind of showing off and people were talking about it on the internet. And I think I've done a video on the dev kit. No, maybe not. I don't know. I don't remember. I've done so many videos at this point that I don't even remember all my videos. But nonetheless, uh, some of the other information is that they are reworking the DualShock controller as a whole. Now, they haven't said exactly what they're doing with it, but my guess is they're probably going to be getting rid of the stupid uh, light bar. I hate that thing. I never use it. I don't go, hey, green, or hey, red, or hey, blue. It's your turn. No, I just call my friends by their names when they're playing with me. So they're probably going to get rid of that stupid light bar, which thank goodness that they are because that thing would kill your battery so freaking fast that I, I, that's one of the things that I most hate about the PlayStation 4 in their stupid controller that dies within like two hours of playing. It starts to die and I'm like, what is the point? What is the point of this thing? And uh, maybe that's just me. Maybe it's a little bit more than two hours. Nonetheless, they die so fast. Hopefully, they're going to fix that battery issue because I honestly, I can't stand it. I can't stand that stupid battery issue. Moving on from there, they are going to be making it a USB Type-C port. And thank God that they are. Um, I know some people are probably going to be a little upset because they've invested so much into the PlayStation 4 and... Uh, the PlayStation, well, I mean, the PlayStation 4 has a uh, micro USB, and then the one before that was a mini USB. But anyways, the PlayStation 4, or PlayStation 5 is going to be using USB Type-C for its charging port, which I prefer because I prefer a standard. I prefer where I could use all of my USB Type-C cables for, you know, the new Stuff that I have, you know, my phone takes it, and my the Switch takes it, uh, my watch takes it, my, I mean, everything takes it, might as well have, oh, and you know, computers take it now, that's even, that's even the Mac takes it, the Mac Pros, and the Mac uh, Air, uh, they're all taking USB Type-C, so might as well move into the future with that. 
So moving on from pl there, uh, PlayStation will be 4K Blu-ray. And uh, I mean, obviously, I think they have 4K Blu-ray right now. I think they do upscaling on the PlayStation 4. But the PlayStation 5 will have 4K, uh, 4K, you know, native 4K Blu-ray player. Yay! I mean, <laughs> I mean, they already do. They already have 4K, so it's like not that big of a deal. And honestly, it's like, you know. So getting to the final information here is actually the release day or the release time frame is they're looking for holiday of 2020. So that's going to be somewhere in Q4. Q4 is uh, October, November, December of next year. And my guess is it'll probably go on release, probably or, or on release mm, sale, probably October, early November, so that parents and people can get underneath that Christmas tree and give it away for you know the other holidays that are out there. Nonetheless, that is the information that we have right now. It's pretty exciting. There is no how much it's going to cost. I assume it's going to be quite a bit. Oh, actually, one more thing. I forgot about that. So it is going to have ray trace technology. So the same thing that NVIDIA cards are using right now, the PlayStation 5 is going to have ray trace technology. Ray trace technology, if you don't know, is dynamic lighting from around the environment. So the way that ray tracing works is uh, that normal lighting for video games doesn't work is things that are ambient, things that are behind something or anything, you'll actually be able to see the light. Currently on non-ray trace technology, the light is not actually put out and um, it, until you get it into your line of sight or until it starts to get rendered. Ray tracks technology changes that to where you actually see the light and it's ambient across the entire game or in across your entire environment. So if there's an explosion that's over here that you can't see, the explosion is happening or the fire is happening and you can see it on like, you know, a car or some water or something like that. Anyways, it makes it a little bit more immersive. Anyway, thank you again so much for stopping by 123Geek. Once again, if you have not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. Please hit that bell icon and please don't forget to share this. And, I, and I, please hit that like. It helps out a bunch. And thank you so much for stopping by 123Geek. Have yourself a fantastic week.